serious, what celebrity death hit you the hardest, Mr. Rogers, as a kid growing up in Pittsburgh, so many of my afternoons were spent exploring a new world with him, I had a friend in college that I talked to after Mr. Rogers had passed, and he had said that when he and his brother were sad they both watched his show because it felt like somebody loved them. Douglas Adams, author of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I was kind of a weird kid, had trouble connecting with people, then I read Hitchhiker's Guide when I was 12 year old and it was like a light switching on, a strange twisting logic, the absurdism, the silly cynical ridiculousness of it all it felt like, for the first time. I had found a worldview and perspective I could relate to. Douglas Adams became this almost mythical figure to me. This strange, distant person I could finally connect with. I desperately wanted to meet him, to be his friend. Then I learned that, a year before I'd even started the books, he'd died. It honestly crushed me. It felt I'd lost my best friend. I mourned him, and mourned the imagined relationship I could have had with him. Looking back it was obviously a parasocial relationship, and my fantasies about this 50 year old British author becoming buddies with a 12 year old kid living in the US were nonsense, but I still felt it acutely at the time. He was super active on a hitchhiker's guide forum before he died. I'd write up some normal post in a thread talking about morning routines or whatever, and within 15 minutes, my idol responded with a paragraph criticizing my tea making, or giving me advice on what to major in or chiming in on political events of the day. Usually with his brand of dry, glib wit, he posted a few times mentioning how he wanted to improve his overall health. And for those who don't know, he had a heart attack at a gym. I remember feeling sad, thinking he would have the funniest possible take about the circumstances of his own death. Terry Pratchett, new Terry Pratchett. It was also such an awful, insulting end for such a brilliant mind. His utter rage at what was happening to him, and there was nothing he could do about it was so damn painful. He did some really emotional interviews on UK TV. One I really remember was one he did to raise awareness on Alzheimer's on C4 News where you could tell he was just brought to tears at not being able to communicate how he used to. Then a year after he passed, there was a memorial show for him where Neil Gaiman started crying, saying he just wanted his friend back and it broke me. I still haven't read The Shepherd's Crown, because then when I do there'll be no more Discworld books left to read. I saw the announcement of his death on Twitter with death speaking, at last, Sir Terry, we must walk together, and then the next tweet, Terry took death's arm and followed him through the doors and onto the black desert under the endless night, I was gutted. Phil Hartman, it was just such a sad story, for what it's worth to you. I went to college and was close with his daughter, I didn't know she was related until I mentioned I had made a new friend freshman year to my parents and naturally they recognized her last name, she's doing really well, can't speak to how she deals with her past day in and day out, but she grew up to be a wonderful person and I was lucky enough to go to her wedding and share in that moment in her life, Phil was an amazing man, taken from us way too soon, oh man, every time I think of Phil I think. F is F I'm shbag wife, why couldn't she just take herself out, why take Phil, too, and then I remember the Andy Dick story and get mad at him, again, Phil Hartman was so awesome, true or not, there is a story about John Lovitz decking Dick over his role in that mess, that cheers me up. George Cullen, I grew up watching him and saw his live shows three times, kinda felt like my amazing uncle died, still miss him to this day. Freddie Mercury and George Harrison. Christina Grimmie. She wasn't super famous but she was fairly big on YouTube and made it to the voice and stuff. Did some other things. She was shot dead signing autographs at age 22. It still hits me like a brick sometimes. I followed her for years growing up. The fact that her killer shot her while she had her arms open to hug him still manages to make me cry. Anthony Bourdain. The man was successful. He had many good friends and yet he was so miserable he took his own life. Robin Williams suicide I understood. His quality of life was going to go downhill fast. I feel like if Bourdain got the right help he could have had a happy life. I literally cannot watch any of his shows now. All his offhand comments about depression and suicide sounded like jokes then. But they were all just giant flaming red flags. Kintoro Miura. Leonard Nimoy and Jim Henson. Leonard Nimoy was a big one for me too. Chris Farley. 
still get upset when I think about it and haven't watched I Am Chris Farley since I think it will make me sad. Also the way he died, honestly arguably the saddest celebrity death, especially from a comedian. He had spent the entire weekend doing drugs with a prostitute and she had stolen his watch and left the room and his last words were begging her to come back please. Don't leave. John Candy. I grew up watching his movies and only learned he had passed away while scrolling through his imp two years ago. He died before I was born and I just never knew. Jessica Walter. I love Archer and Arrested Development. I'd rather be dead in California than be alive in Arizona the mighty queen herself. I grew up watching Arrested Development and she was one of my favorite characters. R.I.P. Jessica. Ugh you just reminded me never saw Archer but Lucille was so damn iconic. When Chester Bennington passed I was in such disbelief. Linkin Park played a huge part in defining my music taste and I always loved Chester's singing and screaming. I can remember where I was when I got the news and everything. Anton Yelchin was looking for this one, was gutted when I heard, and his death was so senseless. It wasn't addiction or suicide or old age. Just a freak accident that took away one of my favorite actors, and a promising young talent. It still feels wrong and reminded me life isn't fair. Not exactly a celebrity but Satoru Iwata. I loved many Nintendo games during his era as CEO, and after his passing I was in awe at how much he did personally to save games that were in development hell as well as him choosing to take personal responsibility for the losses Nintendo saw during the Wii U by cutting his paycheck rather than letting go of employees. Truly an exemplary man if ever I've seen one. On my business card, I am a corporate president, in my mind. I am a game developer, but in my heart, I am a gamer. When an entire industry is praising a man for his character upon his passing, you can tell he was a great man to know even if just through professional capacity. Jeff Buckley after releasing such an amazing first album, it seemed he had so much more to give. Sam Lloyd Acker Ted from Scrubs can chat a feral Acaberta from Two and a Half Men. They weren't big celebrities but were a huge part of my teenage years as I struggled through growing up. R.I.P. my friends you will always make me laugh. Robin Williams. I shared my story in my own comment but just so people can know the magic that was this man. Robin Williams. I've told this story on other accounts but I love telling it. As a kid I was one of 10 winners for a sweepstakes to be a pen pal with Robin for a year. I was stoked and I'm like 8 or 9 years old. My brother and sister told me it probably wasn't going to be him. Just a publicist or intern. I didn't care. For months we sent so many letters of Salinas. All his letters were long and he really loved talking about Zelda. She's a little older than me, and all the new projects he was working on. My family went to Disney that summer and I wrote a letter while in the car and I was determined to give it to Jeannie because I was convinced he was always playing him in the costume and wanted to hand deliver at least one. My brother and sister were again deterring me but I wasn't breaking my gate. Well of all coincidences in the world Robin actually was there signing autographs. I was ecstatic, literally jumping for joy as I'm in line. We get to him and I'm rambling like a moth affair telling him how I was a winner and about the letter and yada yada. He just goes Kyle, with a massive grin and opens his coat and pulls out my letter from a month prior that was with a few others. Apparently he kept all our letters on him while on the road to help cheer himself up. Which devastates me now thinking about what that meant. I almost fainted. I cannot express the amount of electric energy surging through me knowing Robin Williams actually wrote me, knew me, and I believe truly loved me and those other kids like we were his children. I'll never ever claim anybody was a bigger fan of his than Zelda. I respect her too much to say that, but I'm definitely his second biggest fan of all time. When he died I cried into my then wife's arms for a full hour. I felt I really lost a true friend that got me through so much growing up. A man that could get my siblings and I to shut up and just revel in his magic four hours at a time. I miss you Robin. Every day. Holy sh dude. Amazing story. Sorry for your loss. Neil Peart. Both my dad and I are big Rush fans so it was heartbreaking knowing that we are never going to see him play live again. Christina Grimmie. I used to follow her YouTube channel very early on, long before she became famous and I was so excited that she made it on The Voice. Then one random day a crazy fan shot and killed her. Celebrity deaths don't really get to me, but hers hit me hard for a while. She had a very bright future ahead of her and it was all taken away in seconds. 
A friend of mine went to school with her in New Jersey, according to him. She was a genuinely wonderful person I roll, like one of those legitimate light up a room types. Philip Seymour Hoffman, you can be clean for 20 years and are still at risk of relapse, he did lose one of his support networks, falling out with AA after drinking for the first time in decades, but like, if he's not safe from addition, who I miss? He's in a wonderful silly movie called Pirate Radio, and his character says, you know, a few months ago, I made a terrible mistake, I realized something, and instead of crushing the thought the moment it came I, I let it hang on, and now I know it to be true, and I'm afraid it's stuck in my head forever, these are the best days of our lives, it's a terrible thing to know, but I know it. I watched the movie after he passed and am near burst into tears. Sobriety is neither gilded nor guaranteed by money and fame. Maybe it is better to think of it this way his chance was not better, and yours is not worse. Mr. Rogers, same. I bawled. I couldn't figure out why this hit me so bad then I did, as a military brat moving from place to place. He was my only constant friend. Chris Cornell, grew up with Sound Jidden and Temple of the Dog. The first audio slave album came out when I was in high school. Epic sound. Seemed like a great guy. I thought he was going to survive the grunge curse. The only one left from that era now is Eddie Vedder. One of my favorite memories of my now deceased brother was driving home from work together. Singing along with hunger strike like a couple of relay holes. I don't mind stealing bread. R.I.P. Russ. Hunger strike a song my co-worker friend and I bonded over. We talked 4 hours after Chris Cornell died about how great he was, life is too short, treasure it, etc. Two months later he crashed into a tree and died, so now I think of him every time I hear that song. I saw Till in Chicago the week he died. Dana dedicated the show to him. Lots of crying that night. No one sings like him anymore. Grant Amahira. I really only knew him from Mythbusters. But after his death I learned about all the other amazing things he had done, and I'm now truly saddened that there's not more people like him. Before Mythbusters he was on an episode of Junkyard Wars where they had special effects teams. They had Ilm, vs. Jim Henson Creature Shop, and I can't remember the third. Grant was obviously on the Ilm team. I met him once at a tiny anime con and while I knew his face and knew that I should know his name, I couldn't place it. We chatted about Halo for a bit over an hour because he seemed super into it. Maybe he wanted a break from all the Mythbusters talk, IDK but he was super nice. It's basically like, imagine if one of your friends only ever, ever wanted to talk about your job, nothing else. Sometimes they just want to shoot the sh**, not talk about their job. Sure his job was interesting, but he likes other stuff too, like Halo. I think one of the reasons his death hit me harder than most celebrity deaths was his age and cause of death. You don't expect people under age 50 to die of a stroke aneurysm. It reminds you that we may not have as much time as we think. He looked pretty fit healthy too. That man got so many kids into robotics and STEM. Such a great loss. Such a smart and kind soul. John Ritter. I was a teenage girl when 8 Simple Rules was on and I vividly remember the episodes where the cast deals with his death. I was so upset when learning that the emotions were real. A couple years later I made the connection to JD's dad in Scrubs as the same guy and it hit me all over. Embarrassing as it is to admit this, I still watch the two farewell episodes of 8 Simple Rules when I feel like crying. I haven't done it in some time due to problems with my own father, but I could imagine that it would be part of the mourning process here. Cameron Boyce. I grew up with him on TV as I religiously watched Jesse when it first aired guy was only a year older than I was. Brittany Murphy. I still get so sad thinking about her death and the fact that she's really gone. It's so hard to watch Uptown Girls and not wanna cry. Patrick Swayze. Dolores O'Riordan. Still not over her death. His name is Prince, and he was funky. Alex Trebek. I think Alex Trebek and Steve Irwin are the only two I've ever tid up over. I have a lot of good memories growing up of watching Jeopardy with my mom, and it felt like a little piece of me was lost when I heard of his passing. I was just a kid when Steve Irwin died, but I still remember my mom sitting me down and explaining to me what had happened, as if he were a member of the family. He instilled a love of animals in me that I still have to this day, and I'm eternally grateful to him for how he treated the creatures he interacted with.
seeing Robert follow in his footsteps also makes me feel proud in some strange way. Carrie Fisher, will probably be David Attenborough when he dies though, Carrie Fisher for me too, particularly because Debbie Reynolds passed away so soon afterwards, and the thought of Billy Lord being in that much pain just broke my heart, Carrie Fisher yeah, I still feel sad when I remember. Ayrton Senna, don't know why cause I didn't follow formulas 1 at all, but I cried in my room. I was 9. Heath Ledger. He was so talented and he was surely a good guy. A Night's Tale is my favorite movie of all time. For as long as I only consider with the nostalgic part of my brain, I'm not even one for rom-coms. But it's such a fun movie I can watch it 100 more times and not get tired of it. Same here. You have been weighed, you have been measured, and you have been found wanting. For me too. Recently went back and watched a bunch of his movies and was reminded just how much of a loss his death was. Adam MCA Yorch. I was a huge Beastie Boys fan in high school. Obsessive. I was holding out on going to concerts until he recovered from cancer because I wanted them to be my first concert. Then one Friday after school I'm showering to get ready for senior prom and my brother opens the door to tell me MCA died. I was devastated, but I still tried to have a good time, however the DJs wouldn't play BB because all the music had to be pre-approved before the dance, it was a rough night. Mitch Hedberg, I was huge into stand up at the time, especially his stuff, he'd just hit his stride, and really deserved to have a much longer career. Steve Irwin, he died a couple of weeks before I started university, at the Freshers Ball. The band stopped playing and asked us to respect a minute's silence for Steve, a thousand pissed up teenagers, away from home for the first time, and not one said a word, until the minute was over and a spontaneous Steve, 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 chant broke out. I don't know if any other celebrity could have commanded that much universal respect. I remember when he died. I was 7 and my older brother was like 10 or 11 at the time. I didn't really know who he was at the time but my brother was bawling his eyes out, he watched him all the time, came here to say Steve Irwin, one of the few that I remember where I was when I heard, it felt really striking as he seemed to really know what he was doing around animals and how well he handled them made it feel like he must be invincible. For me, it was the death of John Dunsworth, Jim Leahy and the trailer park boys, he was such a sweet soul, I was saddened by this as well. My feelings were brought back a few months ago when YouTube started recommending his videos. He talked so much about leaving a legacy behind after he was gone. He loved working with stone and concrete, built a ton of stuff on his lake house and other places all by himself and by hand. You could tell he was a very educated and deep human being. He enjoyed the idea of permanence in stone and concrete work, left behind for generations to enjoy. Nayari Vera, so sudden and so awful how it happened. I was coming here to post Nayari Vera, I feel sick thinking about her 4 year old son potentially watching her drown and she had a history of being a good swimmer, it's just so sad. Lemmy from Motorhead, tid up when I heard about him, tid up even more when I watched HHH's speech at his funeral. Alan Rickman, man f cancer, Alan Rickman was such an awesome person and actor, he taught my master class when I studied abroad. He is as clever and well spoken as you can imagine. Kinda shy too. I was on my way to a maternity appointment when I found out about this. And I was on the train. The pregnancy hormones didn't help. I was a crying mess on the train. This dog. Four years randomly this guy's guitar videos show up in my recommended on YouTube. And in a lot of them the dog is just chilling there. Well this week. He posted this video announcing the dog had died. And I cried. I usually am like oh no when a famous person dies but it doesn't really impact me. But this dog. Man. It got to me. Oh this makes me so sad. I knew exactly who you meant before I clicked the link but it was still crushing to have it confirmed. Rip Maple. I hadn't heard this news and now I'm crying. Back when I used to have Instagram. That was probably my favorite account that I followed. Robin Williams. His humor and spark brought so much light to the world. It is a little bit darker now that he is gone. It was tragic. But what's really tragic is everyone using him a symbol of depression. Robin Williams didn't kill himself because he was depressed. He killed himself because of his struggles with Lewy body disease. An aggressive form of dementia that was literally making him lose his mind. Agreed. A lot of people don't even know about that. 
Love this guy ever since Mork and Mindy. There's an excellent documentary called Come Inside My Mind. It helps you to understand the artist, the man and the reasons. Bill Paxton. The guy was iconic. I can't imagine the movies he was in without him. Mac Miller. I was deep in my addiction at the time and looked up to him a lot. It really hurt me. I used it as motivation though to get sober. Then a year and a half later I lost my partner to addiction also. Please reach out for help if you feel like you can't live without substances. Your life matters. Sober life is beautiful. Had to scroll way too far for this one. R.I.P. Good to read you're doing great. Keep at it. Carrie Fisher. I was at work when I found out and told friend there that is a huge Star Wars fanatic. She started crying and got meted up also. Worse to hear her mother died next day and had been saying I want Carrie back. Robin Williams. David Bowie. Alan Rickman. Stephen Hawking. My dad told me about it just before I went to bed and I spent a solid 20 minutes just sitting on my bed staring at the wall. Didn't get much sleep that night. I always admired him for his work but it wasn't until I watched the theory of everything that I realized how funny he was, and the fact that he thought the Simpsons were the best thing on television really solidified my admiration for him. I wish I had known him in person, I bet he was a great guy to hang out with. It's difficult to explain the feeling, when medical professionals have said he wouldn't survive the first decade of diagnosis, or the decade after that, or the next one. For him to live such a long life and contribute so much can't help but make you think. Also, he took away my existential fear of black holes with mathematics. Dude's a hero. Heath Ledger. I've been a fan since I saw him in A Night's Tale. He was getting bigger and better roles at the time and I was super excited to watch him as Joker in Dark Knight. I was beyond shocked when my father told me that he had passed away a few days later. It wouldn't affect me as much today if my favorite celebrity passes away but as a kid that hit me really hard. Elliot Smith. He honestly just had so much left to give. Watching him grow as a musician from age 16 to 34 just makes me so sad that it ended so abruptly. Amy Winehouse. She was one of those celebrities that you could clearly see needed help. You could hear it in her music. Now that voice is gone. She wanted to go to rehab at one point and her father actively convinced her not to because they'd lose out on profits and fame and she was fine. That was the beginning of her downward spiral that ultimately lead to her death. So many a-holes around her, especially her family, who did nothing but abuse her talent. The woe is me whining her parents did after her death makes me want to puke. You were a main cause of her suffering. I've scrolled down quite a ways and I haven't seen Dolores O'Riordan from the Cranberries on here. Tom Petty also, R.I.P. Eater, also ripped my inbox. You'll loved him. He'll be truly missed. Thanks for sharing all your wonderful stories. Saw him twice on what became his final tour. He was so charming on stage. They sang Free Fallon. And after the song he said man I can hear ya all the way up here. And you'll sound great. Such a sweet man.